we're going to find a quick way to improve the sound quality on a Game Boy Color. Hi and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and this is another little video about the Game Boy Color. In the last video that I put together, it was just checking and trying to get this thing to switch on a bit more reliably. I recently got a bundle of parts from Z Labs in the UK for building a new Game Boy Color, but one of those, this little capacitor here, is supposed to improve the quality of sound. I make a lot of music on the Game Boy and record things from the Game Boy, so the quality of the sound output is quite important. Changing this capacitor to a different value is supposedly going to improve the overall quality of the sound and reduce the noise, the hiss, the things like that. So I was curious about that and I think it's probably worth me doing that and making sure it works with this Game Boy Color before going head first into a new build with an IPS screen all the rest of it. So it's another little mini video just looking at how we can swap out that capacitor and improve the quality of the sound on the Game Boy Color. Okay, so this sort of process is what's known as a recap. Cap being short for capacitor, this component that I've got in here, uh, which will replace one of the ones inside this Game Boy Color. So what we'll need to do is open up the console, remove the existing capacitor, and replace it with the one in here. So I bought this one from Z Labs, and as always, it comes in these nice little packages that I struggle to open. So I'm gonna have to find some scissors. And here we are, two little tiny connectors and the capacitor itself there. So I'll just pop that to one side. We'll need to open up the Game Boy Color, which is done by removing the batteries and taking out six tri-wing screws. Okay, now it's open. You can see our original capacitor here. Um, that is a 100. There we go. So our replacement capacitor there. So that one is 680. Note, it's an electrolytic capacitor, so it's got to go the right way around. The black strip is the negative side and it's labeled on the motherboard with the negative and positive. First thing I'm gonna have to do is try and remove that. Um, it's got these two little metal connectors at the bottom, which are attached to the motherboard. You can either heat that with a soldering iron and try and remove, uh, or I'm gonna have a go with a heat gun and just apply heat to those bits and use some tweezers to try and lift it off. I'll see if we can get zoomed in a little bit for you. Okay, so that's step one, it's removed. It will be hot. And you can see we've got those two bits there, um, which are gonna be the same sort of connection on here. Probably a good idea for me to tin all these surfaces in advance, which just means putting some solder on there before actually attaching them. I'm gonna put some flux. So I've got this liquid flux. I'm gonna put some flux on the surface here. And I'm gonna switch on my soldering iron for this bit too. I am gonna to also prepare the bottom of my capacitor with some flux too. Okay, so my capacitor is in the crocodile clip just to hold it steady. I'll need to warm up the pin with my soldering iron and then just add a little solder to it. And the same on the other one. Warm it first, add some solder, smooth it out. Now the surface on the motherboard, I just need to reheat the pad and add a little more solder to that area. Should come up nice and shiny and smooth. Same with this one here. It's now ready for my capacitor to go in place. Um, you could use the heat gun for this as well, um, but I'm gonna try and do it with the soldering iron to just hold it in place and heat the solder. So do the positive side first, just heat it and slide the capacitor over into place. Rotate the game point. What I'll do is just put an extra little bit of solder on the tip of my iron. I'll just help it flow. Hold it steady. Back to the other side. See if we can get that a bit flatter. Look like I'm quite lined up there, but I can always just reheat and relocate. Just a 
add a little more solder on that side. Hold it down, make sure that flows. Ideally, you're getting it so it's not going to wobble too much. That feels much more secure now. So we'll zoom out and we'll do a quick reassembly without putting the screws in or anything like that. I mean, the main thing here is that it still switches on and that it still has sound. I'm not really doing any huge in-depth checks in terms of measuring noise levels and crackle and everything else. I'll just see how it is once it's all finished. Uh, the main thing for me is that I've installed the capacitor and it switches on and off easily and that the sound is fine as I do so. Um, so later after the build, when I've added the cables and everything else, we'll um, we'll see if it was worthwhile. I'm sure it was. That wasn't actually too bad. So you can actually get sets of three capacitors to replace the ones in there that do over time start to fail. I have got some Game Boy Colors that won't switch on. Um, so I think I'm going to order a few sets of those capacitors, try replacing them and see if that revives the consoles. But in the meantime, this one is now ready for me to build into my new Super Duper Game Boy. So uh, watch out for that video too. All done. OK, so that wasn't too bad. Obviously, I've yet to test it in terms of connecting up to my recording equipment and so on. But I wanted this video to be just about how to actually swap out the capacitors. And for me to have a quick go at doing that and planning whether I'm going to go with it with the full kits. I mean, I say a full kit, there are only three capacitors for a Game Boy, so uh, I think it'll be worth it. I can say that you could do it using a soldering iron. I know I used a heat gun. If you haven't got one of those, um, a soldering iron would be absolutely fine. You just need to be patient, uh, avoid burning any other components, uh, avoid melting any solder that you shouldn't, avoid burning your fingers. Um, but as with most things, if you're patient and you're careful, it'll work out fine. Um, so yeah, now I've got this fully functional. Um, if you want to see how I repaired the switch, I'll try and put a link for the video for that one. And obviously, as I move forward with making my uh, new build with this, I've got an IPS screen and uh, a new shell and new buttons and all sorts. This is it's going to be awesome. Um, and it's nice to know now that I've got a fully functioning Game Boy to start the build because if it's not worth having just a tatty old console um, that may fail on you with all this expensive kit added to it. You've got to make sure you're starting out with something good, um, even though the case is a little scratched and the screen's all scratched. It's like a perfect candidate for a new build. So I'm looking forward to that and watch out for that video when it comes. Again, this is another one of my little short tip videos, just trying out something. So I'll just edit these into little quick tutorials. If you think that's worthwhile, if you enjoy it, let me know in the comments, uh, leave a like. I would massively appreciate it. And if you want to see more like this kind of thing, do subscribe. I'm really looking forward to the full build with the new screen and all the other bits. So watch out for that too. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.